Welcome to Dating, Marriage and Life Stories with Kansi Me. To all our returning guests and all our new guests, thank you for choosing this channel as your source of learning uh, and, and we pray that we will grow together in every area of our life. Kindly look at your subscribe button in the event that you're not subscribed. Please sign in and subscribe and when you sign in then you will get to know when we upload a new video and I will grow and you will also grow as I upload more content for more information. And drop us a comment so that um, if there is any suggestions you are making, drop it there. If you want me to contact you, drop me your email in the, content, in the, in the comment uh, section and I will get in touch with you. I will share with you my email address and then we can talk. Today we are looking at um, raising successful children uh, and the mistakes that parents make as we raise up teenagers. We raise these children to be successful. What is success from uh, the simplest of, of, of terms? Uh, many parents, we tend to look at success as educating the child in the best school, the child graduating, having a good job, getting married to a, a good partner, and uh, as we parent them, as, as we babysit them. And you know, it is not that description. Success is simply not about money. Yes, money is a little part of it. But success is when we raise a child and this child is able to face the world and is able to figure out solutions for the challenges that this child faces in life. For instance, can this child look for a job without the parent pulling strings from left, right and, and the other side? Can this child uh, look for a spouse and get married without the intervention of the, of, the, of the parents? Can this child study a course that they want and apply what they've studied to manage their life? What, do, what are the mistakes that parents make while we try to make our children successful? That they will be independent, that they are prepared to face the world without parents manufacturing, so you know, the checklist on how to help their children to grow. Let's look at uh, how to raise successful teenagers and the five mistakes that parents make as we try to raise uh, good teenagers. Number one, avoid. Parents tend to be so like PAs. They tend to be like personal assistants. Like They tend to be like um, personal handlers to these young people. They want to make sure that the child gets enough sleep. They don't teach them that it is important to sleep. They want to make sure that the child uh, goes to the best school, even if it means paying a bribe for the child to go there. They don't allow these children to manage their lives. You are overparenting. You are too protective. You know, you are doing everything possible to prepare the world for this child. In the event that you have not prepared, this child will not be able to survive. So stop preparing the world for the child. Prepare this child for the world. Number two, the mistake that parents make as we try to raise successful children, successful teenagers. Listen, listen to your children. The children, uh, the millennial children are passing through so much. Most of them are teenagers and, and, and younger adults. They pass through too much. There is a lot of pressure around them. They, are, they have been hit left, right and center by internet, by information on TV. They have been hit right by betrayal of the adults in the past. We used to, to be secure with the adults. We were very secure in our, in our parents' home. That is no longer there. Now, when these children come and it's like, mommy or daddy, I want to talk to you, or auntie or uncle, I want to talk to you, you don't listen. You say, what is it you want to say? I don't have the time. Or the child is talking to you and you're busy looking at your phone and you're looking at the, at the television station. The child wants to explain to you the reason why they cannot go to that school. You are not paying attention. The child wants to explain to you why you cannot leave them at home with the uncle, with the auntie, or with that relative you're keeping in your home, 
You are not paying attention. You are not listening. Listen to the children. If you want to raise successful children, listen attentively. Pay attention to what they are saying. Number three, a study in Harvard says that the children who are going to be successful in later life, they are children who are trained in three areas. One, they are trained to love, they are trained to respect, and they are trained to do, have, to do chores in the house. I mean, look at our, at our parenting styles today. We are raising children where all the work is done by the maid. They lay the children's bed, the teenager's bed. They pack the, the teenager's bags. They go to school. They, you have paid in the metro to take care of, the, of their clothing, washing for them and everything. My goodness, what will this child do? No wonder these children are getting married. The boys cannot, they don't know how to treat a girl because they don't know how to respect. They can never help around the house because they've seen maids walk around their house. And so they fail in relationships. The girls cannot handle anything. They failed because everything was done for them. You overdid it. You overprotected them and you didn't teach them what you were supposed to teach them as a parent. And so it becomes very difficult for them to manage life when they are outside of the home. They cannot relate because you didn't teach them love. They cannot uh, help anyone because they don't know kindness. They just don't know how to manage life. Number four, leave the children's privacy intact. You having these children as your own children and they, them living in your own house does not entitle you to you know, budging in onto their privacy. You have no right to just come and knock on the room without knocking. You know, to just come and enter the room without knocking. We were trained as young children that when you're entering a room, you knock. Now, imagine if you're budging into their room, can they do the same to you? No. Allow them to have privacy. Allow them to... To, to be to, to, to build their own. They are suffering a lot of stress, a lot of depression and a lot of everything. Now you stressing them with budging into their privacy does not help them. Instead, they will resent you, they will build a, a wall around them and you will not be able to, to access them. In fact, if you keep budging into their privacy, they will find ways of keeping you out. They will lock their rooms. And so before you, you, you budge in there, you'll have to knock. And you will not get on the room and quarrel, but they will have attained a way of locking you out. Number five, avoid comparing your children with other people's children. Remember that these children from other families, there is a special way they behave around you. And it is not the same way they behave at home. If you found them at their home and, and you were able to see them from that environment, then maybe you would know how the other children behave before you, you, you commit your children as bad children. And remember, there are people who think you're the world of your children. They think they are the greatest. They think they are the best. So stop comparing them. God has gifted children differently. Every child has their own special, unique uh, behaviors. And let me tell you, it has been discovered. These children you underlook, the children who, does, who don't look serious, those who don't look like that they are the best, like they are the sharpest, like they are the smartest, like they are the, the ones who know how to manage their weight. It turns out that in later life, they are the children who will be successful. I mean, successful in terms of managing their life, in terms of kindness to the people, in terms of respect, in terms of humility, and in terms of hard work. These children that are underlooked in most cases are they are the best children as, as life goes on. And then number uh, six, respect the children. A child who is respected will learn to respect. A child who is not shouted at, a child who is loved, will learn to be a better person in relating with other people. And always remember that these children, yes, we want them to be, to be friends with them, but there is a limit. They have friends. You are going to be a friend 
in addition to being a parent. So as you make friends, as you respect this child, keep your foot on the ground. There is that line that must not be crossed. Friendship lines are crossed, but parenting lines must never be crossed. And then the last one, never force these children to do what you want to do, not what they want to do. I've seen parents force their children to study medicine, to study law, to study, and then these children end up coming back to do what they really want, what they should have studied in the first place. I know of medical doctors here in Uganda who are DJs, and they are excellent DJs. There are some who are the lawyers, but they are excellent administrators. There are some who are forced to study, uh, you know, agriculture, and that's not what they want. They wanted to be a teacher, and you have just de de minimized the course, and, and you have not liked it. And so they end up studying the first degree as a degree for parents, and then they go back to do what exactly they want. So stop wasting their time. Ask them what they want. And in the event they are not ready to study the next level, please let them be. If the child says, I don't want to start university this year, I want to first do this work, let them be. Don't force them to study. Give them work to do. Let them do the work they want to do. At the right time, they will study. If you force them, they will go there, buy exams, and end up coming out without knowing anything. Have you heard of children who have finished university and they cannot do a CV? They don't even know what they want. They have started to be, uh, you know, this, and they end up, they cannot do it. They have studied law, they have first class, and they cannot do it. You force them into IT. They cannot even make a single program in IT. Listen, there are children who have not studied yet to complete. You know them here in Uganda, and I'm not saying children must not study. They must study and complete. But in the event they are not ready for their next program, please let them be. There are some good persons doing excellent work. They have not completed their studies, and at the right time they will go. But they are successful in, in, at that level that they are in. So allow children to think creatively. Allow children to make decisions. Allow children, with your guidance, to cut out their future in life. And when they can manage their life and face this life and make solutions to problems and earn their living and manage their relationship, then we'll know that we have successful children to the glory and the honor of God. Thank you so much for watching up to the end. Kindly subscribe, like, and uh, drop us a comment. Uh, God bless you. Thank you so much. Please come back again.